raises a uh, few uh, side issues in halacha, or some of the content of the parsha itself. The Torah says, uh, "Pinchos ben Elazar, ben Aaron Hakohen, Eishiv es Chamosi." So in the Torah, Pinchos is spelled Mole. Pei Yud Nun Ched Samach. Uh, the, uh, so to speak, regular way, the way that is usually spelled is without a yud. Pei nun ches samach. So how do you spell it? So you say, well, what's the difference? Pinchas is pinchas. But we have certain rules, for instance, in Gitan. So uh, a get is a very exact instrument, probably the most exact instrument that exists in Jewish law. And because of that, therefore, the name has to be spelled correctly. So what if the husband's name is Pinchas? Do you spell it mole? Pei yud nun chet samach? Or do you spell it Pei nun chet samach. And does it make a difference how he spells it? So this is a, a, a basic discussion because it doesn't only apply to Pinchas. For instance, uh, the name David, which we assume is always Dalit Vov Dalit, but uh, in Divrei Ayomim, David is spelled with a Yud, Dalit Vov Yud Dalit, spelled Mole. So again, the question is, how do we write it? And uh, the same thing is true of the name Eliyahu, because we see in Tanakh, Inini Shaleach Lachem as Eliyah Anovi, or Yeshaya, or is it Yeshayahu? Yirmiya, is it Yirmiyahu? So we always have this question whether a name is spelled Choser or Mole, whether it's spelled fully. In other words, is the shortened version like a, a nickname, a common name, but it's not the real name? Or does it have to be as the real name, uh, Mole, uh, as it is written many times in the Torah? So this is the discussion in Aloha. And there are many that say that uh, it depends upon the person that how he spells it will follow his direction. Others say that's not uh, correct because many times people misspell their names. They're uh, not aware of how their name should be spelled. And uh, because of that, therefore, we should try to do it the right way, whichever the right way is. So I remember that, for instance, uh, when I was a rover in Miami Beach and uh, we, in our best, and I had to issue Gitten. So uh, we had a, uh, one of the witnesses, uh, well, his name was Eliyah, not Eliyahu. So as long as the divorce get was local, so to speak, so we had no problems that he always spelled his name Eliyah. But sometimes you have to send the get out of town to a different bed in to be de- to be delivered there to the woman, and we would always get the get back saying that we forgot the vov. Eliyahu, and we would always write back and say, "No, his name is Eliyahu." This goes on all the time, and it's a. Uh, it's an issue that's raised. Uh, today's modern Hebrew names also have uh, different spellings. 
and many of the names today are simply made up. Yeah. So uh, th that's a, uh, a topic by itself. There are many, many uh, swarim uh, that uh, do nothing but concentrate on this question of how Hebrew names should be spelled, etc. Uh, we also have a rule, uh, it's called the Ravado Bar Ahavo rule, that a uh, non Jewish name like uh, Yente or Ita, the last letter should be spelled with an Aleph, not with a He. But if it's a Hebrew name, so then it's spelled with a He. So that's Rav Ado, which was a Babylonian name. So that's Aleph Dalet Aleph. Bar Ahavo, Avo is a Hebrew name, and that's spelled with a He. Uh, I remember that uh, in one of the, the schools in Muncie, uh, there was a teacher that was very particular about this, and he tried to change the names to be spelled correctly, and he was fired. <laughs> so uh, to a certain extent, the rule is to leave well enough alone. But you should know that the, there are issues in uh, spelling the name correctly. Also, uh, a peripheral issue in this week's parsha. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, "Inani no sein lo es brisi shalom." The Bnei Shalom Kaviyochel promises Pinchas that I give him my covenant. Shalom of peace. Well, he needed the covenant of peace because he killed somebody. And he killed the Nasi of Shevet Shima. Rashi already uh, quotes the fact that the uh, Jewish people uh, complained greatly, you know, and what a chutzpah. And that his, uh, his Zayda was an Ovid Avodazora, he came from Yisrael. And uh, he's killing Jews. He's killing, where, where did he have the right to do that? So therefore, he himself was in danger that perhaps the tribe of Shimon would exact revenge, would take vengeance upon him. So the Rabboni Shalom promised him, in no St. Louis, Brisi, Shalom. I promise uh, my covenant of peace to him and uh, not only that, the Bris of Kahuna Solom will be to him also. He'll be a Kohen, eventually he's a Kohen Godo. And uh, the time of the Shoftim, and that all of his descendants will be Kohanim as well. Now, in the word Shalom, there are different traditions in how to write it in the Sefer Torah. Not the spelling, the spelling Shin Lam and Vov Mem is universal. But there's something that's called a Vov Ketiya. The Vov in uh, Shalom is cut in half. The line down is broken in the middle. Now, ordinarily in the rest of the Sefer Torah, if you find letters that are cut in the middle, that uh, are faded or whatever. So the Sefer Torah is not uh, used we have to fix it. And here you have lachatchila avov ketia, according to one tradition of Sofri. Not every Sefer Torah is avov ketia, but many Sefer Torah are. I don't know whether ours is or not. It is. Yeah, he was saving on ink, so. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the usual custom. The usual custom in the uh, Ashkenazic Sifre Torah is that it's a Vovktiya. 
So on that, the Mephorshim also darshan. The Tinan, he knows, saying, Lo Brisi, Sholom, the Mona Sholom promised Sholom and to protect him, but he wanted to know that there is a complaint against him. The Sholom is not complete because of the fact that he killed somebody, killed two people, the Kano as Kinosi. So Chazal say that Pinchas is the only true Kanoi in all the Klal Yisrael. And that's why the Gemara says that Pinchas zu Elio. We find that Elio is also, because Kano Kinesi La he says. I also am a Kanoi. So it's, so to speak, the, the same DNA. It's the same soul that uh, pursues it. But otherwise, uh, we don't find... Uh, we find the same thing uh, I discussed with you regarding Nozer. There are parshas in the Torah that appear, but uh, they are, so to speak, one-off parshas. They're not things that we recommend. And Kanos is certainly not something that we recommend. We see that with Elio, the Ramon Shalom himself is not happy with Elio. They're not happy with his Kanos. He sends him to the desert, and then he's a, according to Jewish tradition, that's why he always invited to every Brit, and he's invited to every Pesach Seder, so that he'll see that the Jewish people, look at the Jewish people thousands of years later, they still hang on to it. So therefore, uh, so to speak, your zealotry was misplaced. It's not the way you see it. But anyway, this idea of the Vov Ketiyok is also part of that idea. That it's not a perfect Sholom, because it was brought about through Kanos, it was brought about through murder, it was brought about through killing people. And even though it's justified, and not only justified, it's rewarded, and nevertheless, that's what it is. And therefore, there's a discussion, a coin that, for instance, is, was in the army and killed somebody in the line of duty. Should that coin continue to be Ole Leduchan, to bless the people? Because he killed somebody. So, uh, all of this is a, uh, it's not clear to us simply because we had the Hashmanoim, we're Kohanim. And we have Pinchas himself, it becomes the Kohen Gadol. But nevertheless, the issue, uh, the moral issue is present, that the uh, ultimate way of achieving peace is not necessarily through uh, violence and kanos towards others. But in any event, those are side issues uh, that appear in the Parsha. How the name is spelled, how the Vov is complete, but nevertheless, everything in the Torah has meaning, and it has a lesson for us, and we should be aware of it. Rabbi Hanani ben Akash, Yomer, Otsa Kodesh Baruch Hu, Lezakos, Yisrael, Afichachir Belohem Tov.